That's not good. So speed swap does not work instantly then. Hello friends, welcome to today's video. I hope you're all doing great. We are finally jumping into some VGC Series 12 content. It has been a while since we did any dedicated VG content on the channel. We have been streaming recently and if you'd like to check out any of our streams, we stream on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday here on YouTube. We kick off around 7.30 in the evening UK time. So it'd be great to see you over there. We've been doing a lot of competitive content recently. So if you are interested in that sort of content, come by the streams. It would be great to hang out with you but getting on to today's episode we have got a very special team to feature from a good friend of mine Bebum he has uh, recently set up his own YouTube channel he is an Egyptian VGC player and he's doing his best to grow the community competitive community over there as well as the kind of general Pokemon community in that area of the world so great to see uh, his channel will be linked down in the description below as well as his other socials his Twitter and his Twitch where he does stream uh, his content is primarily all in Egyptian so for the majority of us it's going to be difficult to understand but nonetheless he is putting really good quality teams content out there as well so something else for you to try and keep tabs on and give him a little bit of support but big shout out to him for today's team and as you can see we've got it up on the screen now it's going to include the Palkia Calyrex Ice Rider a very solid trick room team you've got three trick room setters in the team there with the Palkia the Calyrex and the Mimikyu you've got the option with the Mimikyu to be disruptive not only on an offensive side but on a support side with that will-o-wisp as well which is a really nice feature to have you've got nice support options with the amoongus and the incineroar alongside these trick room setters to help set things up with fake out support intimidate parting shot taunt on the incineroar and then the the kind of the common things that you're going to see on amoongus with that redirection the rage powder and then the spore which is going to be so good under a trick room conditions the other spice that you can see is that Feromosa, not something that we see played too often in this format, but a very speedy Pokemon nonetheless. Only really outsped by Reggie Alecki, but it does have that speed swap ability there where you can put the speed swap onto something like the Calyrex and give it that stupidly high speed stat to be disruptive on the other side of the speed spectrum. You've got a heavy trick room mod and you've got the speed swap as well that you can kind of take advantage of. You've got the call chain as well, which is a really nice option to kind of show up the defenses especially on something like the Calyrex where maybe Zashin's a little bit of a threat you can coaching your own Calyrex max and then try and knock it out while taking the uh, the behemoth blade especially with that Bibiri uh, berry support that you've got on there so this is the team there's a rental we'll jump into it now and we'll have a couple of games with the team hopefully we can get that speed swap running today that would be really good if we can get that working in game and uh, we'll wrap up with the rental at the end of the episode so we'll dive straight in we are gonna lock in with the team right now and hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent of the episode as i say we have been streaming a lot recently on the channel so ranking needs a little bit of work but we've been having a lot of fun with a bunch of different teams that we've been trying so straight in there with our first opponent playing a reggie alecky calorex shadow rider dialga azumarill incineral and andrus incarnate yeah interesting nonetheless it probably has that sheer force hidden ability which gives it a lot more power what we're looking at, probably a kind of a trick room switch with the Dialga, potentially. Um, maybe looking at something like Imprison on the Calyrex as well, because it could carry trick room itself to kind of help set up things like the Dialga and especially Azumarill. Uh, you would maybe think the Azumarill might be more of a, a Perish song user with Sap Sipper rather than a, a Belly Drum set, but you can't really discount either. Uh, big thing for us here is. The Dialga is going to cause uh, our Calyrex and Palkia a lot of issues, so it's going to be a difficult Mon to really deal with. What we tr probably want to try and do is get the Trick Room up, get Amoongus on the field and put that thing to sleep if we can. Um, it's just whether or not we'll be able to get the Trick Room set up or not. I think Incineroar as a lead is pretty safe here. We can pivot out Parting Shot, Fake Out and things like that. Um, let's go Palkia, Amoongus and hopefully lock in with the Calyrex and uh, before the time runs out because obviously you've got to be a bit conscious about that as well. Get back into the swing of these videos because it's always hard to kind of like talk about the team, talk about the options and things like that and then lock in the team as well on top of it. So out of practice, a little bit rusty, but nonetheless, nice to be back. Let's see what my opponent leads with in today's game. Okay, Calyrex and Reggie. Which isn't too bad, to be honest. Like, we can get the Trick Room up with Palkia. The only issue would be, obviously, 
uh, if there is that in prison there, which does cause us a few issues. We could max the park here as well, um, and just start getting max quake boosts onto the field. Because if we look at my opponent's team, let's have a look at what they've got. Yeah, they're primarily like, you would imagine that Landorus is going to be a special attacker rather than a physical attacker. You can't discount the physical attacker, but primarily everything's more specially based, isn't it? So, um, one of the things we could potentially do is just go out into the Calyrex parting shot there and play around them not going for the trick room. I think Max Quake into, into the Aleki. Yeah, let's do that. Let's max up. The thing is with the Palkia teams, I always find like a lot of the times when you when you are playing Palkia, you know, uh, it is pr pr probably going to be more than likely one of the things that you max most of the time, you know. We are going to see the Aleki max. I wonder if we see a max darkness come out here. So that's spit F drop. And what um, well, the Calyrex will hold, I don't know, but... I do worry about the Imprison. I think that's why I've chosen not to go for the Trick Room here. The Trick Room in most situations would make a lot of sense, right? We could go for the Trick Room. There's no point in going for a Fake Out into the Lecky because it feels like that is going to be predominantly where the um, the Max is coming from. So, see what my opponent goes for. Just Max Lightning wanting that Electric Terrain up, which is fine. And we take that pretty comfortably. This Palkia is just such a unit. Are we going to see the, um, the Imprison? No, just Astral Barrage. So we could have got the Trick Room up. Would have been maybe a bit difficult because the Max Lightning plus the Astral Barrage maybe wouldn't have allowed us to uh, to get that combination off. But you can see now we can just drop the Aleki pretty pretty easily here. And we know that if the, um, the Dialga comes in, it's not going to be a Max option for my opponent. So that's pretty good. The issue about getting the electric train up though for us is if we decide to get something like uh, a Moongus onto the field, it does um, make it a bit difficult to be that bit more disruptive with our um, spores because anything kind of grounded obviously has that protection from the electric terrain which isn't ideal but we can manage anyway. We've got the Pollen Puff which is going to be a nice option to uh, top uh, Palkia back up especially after that spit f boost that we just had and the calyrex now on on minus one special attack so it's not going to be hitting as hard as it was before there's the dialga coming out which makes things a little bit more awkward to deal with but i mean it's a prime target for us just to max quake into here and we can go for the rage powder and just go for that max quake again into the dialga dialga we know only has single target attack so it's not going to be able to use any sort of spread damage and you would imagine a max quake from our palkia should be enough to take it unless it has got something like a shuka you can see the reduced damage there from that uh, astral barrage just nowhere near enough that should do a good no doing nothing nothing among us just a chunky boy so max quake into dialga yeah and I think this is a thing like if you let Palkia get kind of in a position where it is able to kind of get these attacks off the crit there. I don't know if it mattered. I don't know. Probably not. I'm going to say probably not. Uh, but if you let Palkia kind of have the freedom to do this in match, it makes it very difficult to kind of manage um, in Azumarill, the Perish, I would imagine. I think that's what it would have. Um. We can Pollen Puff our own Palkia here, and we could Max Wormwind the Calyrex as well, just to drop the attack on the Azumarill, because Palkia should be faster, but we're going to see the battle cancellation, so yeah, that's, I think, you know, the one thing with Palkia is you can't, you just can't allow it to, to kind of have that kind of free reign. You've got to really slow it down. I always like trying to, you know, if you've got screen support, it's really good against it. Eerie Impulse, another option against it. Um, and Parting Shot as well. If you can be kind of sneaky with your Parting Shot on your, your Incineroar, that first kind of turn, it does make it a bit easier to manage. But in these situations where you've kind of not got, I mean, they had, they had the Dialga. Dialga would have been a, a way better option, I think, to bring against it. Because then you pressure with the Max Wormwind for, for really big damage, you know, and you, we're not going to be knocking out a Max Dialga with 
max quick and we're not going to be getting this bed f boost to kind of compensate for the damage he's going to be throwing out and return you know so i think that would have been the better approach but we've got an ex opponent they're playing a team of kyoga rillaboom zashi and chansey love to see it love to see it uh grim snarl and the incineral so we've potentially got screen support here got a lot of disruption from that grim snarl we're going to have to bear in mind that the the chancy is on the team so something like parker is not going to be as effective as it would normally be because just hitting into it with any sort of special attacks is going to really be very difficult although they do have the Kyoga, which makes Palkia quite appealing in this match. Zashian always going to be a threat, so we're going to need to manage that well. I think Incineroar makes sense for ourselves. So we could go down a, a, a line of like Palkia Amoongus or Palkia Incineroar, get our Trick Room set up. It might be a nice option to do that. Probably Incineroar, Amoongus in the back, and then I think Calyrex is going to be a big Probably a maximum in this match, I would imagine, because if we can get that in trick room um, and in a position where it's not intimidated, that'll make it a lot easier. Especially if we've got that Amoongus support next to it, then we don't really need to worry about in a trick room about what my opponent's got out in the field because we pressure with that spore um, and we can set maybe sword stance up before we do max as well, which is, is an option. So just having these kind of like, I guess ideas in your head of how the team is gonna win is always good going into a match you know but it's 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 easier to do that than it is to kind of execute because your opponent's gonna be aware of that board state that you know they don't want to get themselves uh caught up in and they're gonna do everything to kind of stop you so it's just about trying to adjust during the battle to be able to try and get this set up so zashin and Cinero for my opponent they get their intimidate off before us, so they've got the faster fake out, which makes it a little bit tricky. Um, I wonder if we could. I don't feel super comfortable about just going for the trick room here. I feel like they got the option where they can they can fake out into our park here, or they could fake out into our uh, Incineral here. Which you know, if they fake out into our park here, we can fake out into Zashi in this turn. Um, but it's whether or not we'll be able to take a play rough and it's it's kind of not not the ideal situation so i think what we'll do is we'll partner shot into the zashian here we'll switch straight into amoongus as well to hopefully take a play rough that potentially will come out into that slot Fake out into the Amoongus. Rocky Helmet. I always think Rocky Helmet Amoongus would be such a good play in Series 12, you know. For these situations. Because at this part, you can think, okay, well, now I can just proc the, the Regenerator now and get that all that health back. And I would have done so much damage to my opponents. It works so well. It's been really good in previous formats. So you can see how well it would work in these current formats as well. But we're putting ourselves in a nice position now because... The Zashian is going to be minus one at the minute. We can switch the Amoongus out to Incineral this next turn and we can just set the Trick Room up. So we can get a pretty seamless Trick Room. The Play Rough is still going to be threatening, but at minus two, it's way less threatening than it would have been, you know, when it first hit the field. So Incineral onto the field. Get that cheeky intimidate onto the field and now with the trick room up we probably want to like spike like switch incineral straight out if we can still doing a good chunk of damage but we are going to be able to take this really comfortably flare blitz going into that among us slot so that's fine palkia set up though the trick room and that's the main kind of goal for us right at this stage now the zashian super pressured at this stage of the match so you would think as well with how Lord, its attack is it's going to switch out 100%. So it's a pretty free parting shot for us into this slot. We probably do take a parting shot as well from uh, the opposing uh, Incineral. But if you look at like what my opponent's got on their team, I think the only thing that wouldn't enjoy... That would be alright... Well, Chansey would be alright coming in on anything. And Rillaboom as well. So uh, I don't really want to max because I think we max the Calyrex in this game. If I'm completely honest. So let's go for just a Hydro Pump here. And like I say, because I think we're going to get a parting shot out from the opposing Incineroar onto a park here. It doesn't make them feel like I want to be maxing it. Because I don't really want to be locked in minus one 
and be maxed because it's just it's not the ideal situation so we'll get the parting shot off onto misclick there should have went for this i'm sure i went for the zash in but never mind that's fine um feels a little bit wasteful uh get the amoongus in it's probably the best thing because then we can just put stuff to sleep and get calyrex kind of freely on the board There's that parting shot we're talking about. I'm annoyed at myself. I went into the, the Incineroar. None that is going to parting shot out. This is a total misclick from my end, so that's a bit annoying. So we just got that Kyogre down to minus one. Would have been, you know, I know we got Moongus in, but it would have made it a little bit more manageable. And there's a Grim Snow. Okay. It's not going to enjoy taking a Hydro Pump in the rain. Even though we are minus one, it's still going to be hitting pretty decent. Yeah, okay. We've got to worry about... I mean, this board state here isn't too bad for us because we can just spawn. If they haven't got Fake Out on the Grim Snarl, then we're kind of... We're in a great spot. Um, and the other option is we just go after... The Grim Snarl, Hydro Pump. They could... Mm, they could Spatial Rind us. But I think they're not... I think they Fake Out the Amoongus if they got it, to be honest. Good Light Screen as well. Okay. Max Hailstorm from the Kyogre potentially coming out into Among Us. Max Lightning even. They gotta have fake out to kinda save them here. But our Tricoon turns are taken down and we know that that Zashin's in the back, which makes it a little bit more difficult. Okay, the Thunder Wave, but Among Us avoids, so we get that spore, clean spore. No fake out support from my opponent, so really just shutting down what my opponent's able to do here with the um with the Kyogre and we do connect with a Hydro Pump which feels a little bit bad considering they missed the Thunder Wave although that wouldn't change the game or pick up a knockout you know there is always a chance if we do get paralyzed then um, it, it makes it a lot more tricky for my opponent to uh, well it makes it a bit, they've got a better chance of avoiding the spore so Incineroar has to come in here get that fake out and just create a little bit of room for my opponent what's his ash in Okay. Okay. Well, I think now is probably a decent time to... I do worry about the Kyogre waking up. Um... We'll spawn. We need to keep an eye on our Trick Room turns. So we've got two turns left. Okay. They're going to protect. They're going to 100% protect the, uh, the Kyogre here. Let's get the Calyrex on the field now. I don't know if I want to max the Calyrex either, to be honest, because with the Incineroar in the back. Yeah. That's what I mean, like, they've got that. that unless they're safety goggles are Incineroar, which they potentially could be. Intimidate's handy onto our Calyrex for sure. No. No safety goggles. Which is good. Uh, of course he wakes up. Max Lightning. Alright. Not ideal. Gonna give that immunity to the, uh, the, the Spore though. Which is not ideal. But at the same time. We could. Pollen Puff. Into Calyrex. Max. Wake. Into Incineroar. Because they've not got a safe switch. You know, from the Incineroar, they can't freely switch in the Zashin and kind of get away with it. They can do it. They're going to take a bunch of damage at the same time. We get the special defense boost. I know our Trick Room turns are ending, but with Amoongus and then Incineroar as well in the back, you know, we've got the redirection for the Zashin, um, and we've got Intimidate support, and we've got the Bibiri Berry. We've taken a bunch of damage from the, the Kyogre, which isn't ideal, but we've got ways to kind of help support against what my opponent's got left. And Palkia versus Kyogre, like, you know. If that is the end game, then that's that's super fine. Because it, it's likely they don't have uh, Ice Beam. They may do. So we'll get that Pollen Puff. We'll take that all day. Just to top ourselves up. And then the Max Quake. And we know that the Incineroar has to stay asleep this turn. 
Okay, so that's super nice. Get that spin F boost. And we'll see what this Kyogre goes for. Max guys are likely into the Calyrex. I would imagine. It's our last turn of Trick Room though, as the guys are coming out. This is our last turn of Max as well, so. Still does a big fat chunk of damage though, doesn't it? It really, it's not ideal. Um, I think we just pollen puff again. Is this our last turn of Trick Room? I think. No, that's it now. Okay. We just gotta hope that the Incinero doesn't wake up. Yeah, let's go for that. There's a spout. Oosh. Don't wake up. <laughs> of course it wakes up. Of course it wakes up. Of course it wakes up. These one turn sleeps are not helping us. We took the risk and I mean we got punished for it, so we could have we could have rage powdered there. And it eats its berry, which is not brilliant. But the rain does stop, okay. Um I guess what we need to do is try and get rid of the incineral pollen puff with Palkia. It's just, I think the Kyogre, yeah, I think we have to Rage Powder here. We have to Rage Powder. And then, because they're going to Thunder. And then Earth Power into the Incineroar. And then we can Trick Room the next turn, I think. And try and stall out these, this Electric Terrain. Hopefully we can get one more match in after this because I really want to try and get that speed swap run and we haven't had that yet, so we'll see. Oh, there's an ice beam. Not ideal. Can we take? Special defense boost we should be able to, yeah. And there's our wiki berry. So we'll take another one of those, which is nice. Behemoth blade, though. Not ideal. Okay, this is going to be really tight. This is going to be super tight. So, I think we've got to try... Have we got Protect anywhere? I don't think we have. Um, What are we? Special defense-wise with Palkia, can we get our Trick Room up? That's the big thing. The Palkia is the annoying. If we got... We haven't got... Oh, we have got Protect. So we could potentially Protect, get Incineroar in. It didn't really help us, though, doing that. Is there going to be Behemoth Blade? Hmm. Okay, let's try this. This would be bad if they, they go Water Spout here. But I'm hoping that they don't. Hope when we see Ice Beam and then the player rough into the Incineroar. Well, they may double into Amoongus. I don't. I doubt it though. Now they go Behemoth. Okay. Just for that safe knockout, which is better for us. And then Ice Beam, I'd imagine, from the Kyogre. Yeah. Okay. And Amoongus should take. We need to spoil the Kyogre though, that's... Mm. Okay, if we can spoil the Kyogre, fake out that slot as well. I just don't want to leave the, the Zashin kind of unchecked. <sighs> it's so easy for them just to click Protect on both things. Okay, there's no Protect coming out. Hopefully we take this with Amoongus. Oh, 
Bebum with these calcs. Okay, we get the spore off. Which is good. Right. Um, Sleeping Ogre is good. Now we can... I guess... We could spore parting shot into the Kyogre. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's... Okay, really quick attack. This is fine, because if we... This is a guaranteed sleep turn for the Kyogre now. We just needed to stay... Well, do we need it to stay asleep? Yeah, we do, because we need to... We need one more turn where it stays asleep. That's a big thing for us, I think. And then we can try and get a Trick Room up. Because we need to fake out the Zashin, I think, this next turn. And then try and get Trick Room up, and that will... It's hard though with the fake with the quick attack makes it difficult. Um, so it's whether or not we just go double down into the, the Zashian. But I think the trick room, I think we need the trick room and we need the Kyogre. At least hopefully we get more than a one turn sleep. Yeah, which we've not had so far. Okay. Fake out, Zashian, trick room. See if we can do this. Defeat the mighty swordfish combo. But we know the set in the Kyogre. You know, Ice Beam Thunder, Water Spout. So if we can we can hit it stays asleep. Okay, that's that's perfect. The quick attack, hopefully we can take the quick attack. Because that's what we need. We need to take the quick attack. Um I'm going to see the Zashin protect here, probably, and hope that the Kyogre wakes up. I think that's what you're kind of hoping for. Because we could double the Zashin. We've got to try and, and damage this Kyogre. We've got to, got to. Is this going to be enough? I don't know, maybe. It's enough! Okay. <laughs> the crit probably mattered, I think. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to calc it. I feel like it would matter, though. Spatial rend. Oh, don't do this. Don't do this. Parker survives, but an ice beam is going to... An ice beam's got us now. 100% ice beam's got us. Um, so there's nothing we can do. We needed that special rent to hit. We needed that. That's super. That's super frustrating. But well played from my opponent. Special rent sucks. Unless we get a crit in it. Bah. No. No chance. There we go. Okay. Sad times. Good game to my opponent. A little bit sad from our end of things, but can you do that spatial render just hit we had that locked up but spatial rend i mean do we go earth power there probably not because i don't think earth power does enough damage with a special spatial rend and then we have to we're relying on spatial rend hitting regardless so we need them to hit um it's just the most janky of uh, moves Okay, next opponent, and probably the last one of the day, is going to be the Thunderous Zashian, Calyrex Shadow Rider, the Landorus Incineroar, and Reggie Alecki. The inclusion of Reggie Alecki again makes me feel like I can't really bring the Feromosa as much as I want to. Uh, otherwise, we would be able to. Um, it just depends whether they lead with it or not. Potentially not. If they like really worry about the kind of the Trick Room mode, then potentially not. I do want to bring the Feromosa at some stage to try and do some stuff. Can we bring it now with Kali? Let's just do it. Since it's our last game with the team today, let's bring it. Because it can work. I think the only issues... There's there's a couple of issues with my opponent's team. If they bring Incineroar or the Aleki as a lead, which they're likely to bring, one, I think, the Incineroar more than the Aleki. Because the, the minus one makes it difficult for us to, to kind of get any sort of advantage there. We could potentially speed swap the park here, though. That might work for us a little bit better. The fake out though from the, the Incineroar makes it a little bit more tricky, of course. But let's see. Um, so we'll go Palkia, we'll go Calyrex in the back. And then I think 
as a last mon probably wants something like Incineroar just for that Intimidate primarily onto the Zacian and just to give us a little bit of room it gives us a nice switch into the Calyrex as well as a resist to those Astral Barrages that are going to be super threatening let's see bear in mind that we are forcing or trying to force the speed swap here just for value entertaining entertainment value for this video I don't think in normal circumstances I would I would go for this yeah because Electro Web Astral Barrage just gets us every time, every time. Um, but we are in a situation where we can potentially just protect, try and nuke the Aleki, go for the Max Quake here. Um, yeah, we can't really even go for the Throat Chop because it's just not gonna, it's just not gonna, not gonna work, is it? So. I think we're forced to max because I think the the threat of the max lightning and then astral barrage into Palkia is too much where we can just go for the max quake into the Aleki and hope to kind of pick it up. The bad thing about this play is they do have landers uh, in the back where they could vault switch out onto the, the Feramosa, although I don't think they do. I think they're kind of their hands forced to go for the Electro Web and then go astral barrage. The other thing, like we mentioned earlier against this lead, is that there's always the, 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 the worry that there is the uh, the imprison there, but I don't know how confident they feel about the Feramosa staying on the field, because if they don't go Electro Web, then they do risk having that disruption from the Feramosa, which gets the jump on the Calyrex. There's the Aleki, I think. Big Max in the Master Ball. Oh, it's a Calyrex. Huh. Electro web. Oh, they may, they may go, they may go for, hmm. Huh. They may go for the volt switch then. I don't know. They can't. They can't. I'm surprised the Calyrex is maxing though. <clears throat> but also not, not super surprising. I think it's probably the better option out of the two, to be honest, against what we potentially led. See what the Kali does though. Electro Web, yeah. We knew that they had to do that. Does so much the Incineroar. It's a life orb, Aleki. Max Phantasm. Yeah, they have to double that slot. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Defense Drop makes it a little bit more tricky, of course. Um, and especially because now, if the Zashian comes onto the field, it's not ideal. Especially with that defense drop that we've taken. But with the Aleki out the picture, Feramosa has the ability to come on the field now and use that speed swap if it wants. So Aleki gone, Zashin I'm guessing is going to be what comes out. Although we do have Fake Out that we could kind of utilize here. and it... No, it's Incineral. Huh. Okay. Hmm. I think what we'll do is we'll try and get a cheeky parting shot because I don't mind too much if the Incineral goes down because I think our end game's going to be all about trying to utilize um, the speed swap, in my opinion. And if we can get the rain up with the Palkia now, then as Ashen comes in. Get Feramos onto the field for free, speed swap, and either Max Geyser or even Hydro Pump will be enough to get the Zash in. Okay, there's the fake out we thought. Phantasm into Incine. Ooh. Incineral gets to see another day. Okay. Not one to pick that up, which is interesting. So I think now this is where we'll see the Zash in come onto the field. Um, as the Incineral is 100% gone now. And the nice thing is, what we could potentially do with Feramosa is after we speed swap because we've got the Sash, we can actually switch it back out. I think we need to maybe max guard this next turn though. And obviously it's not as straightforward as what I'm saying because it could be complications. Obviously Zash in could have something like um, Substitute, which wouldn't be ideal, but... 
Let's see, minus two defense star from the park here is not ideal. Um, okay, let's go for and max guard. Yeah, because we need we need the Feramosa on the field. Feramosa is our last hope in this game. Let's see if it can uh, it can help us out, it can pull us through. Right, max guard. Please just drop the Incineroar. Ah, the controller's low. Emoth Blade. Ah. <laughs> They're not going to allow us to do it. They're not going to allow us to do it. We do get the parting shot out into the Calyrex, which is decent. Which is decent. And we do get the Feromorsa onto the field. I just want the... I just... I guess it's better this, honestly, to be honest. Sorry, I'm just plugging my controller in, which is dying of battery. So Feromorsa coming in now. Okay, they know, they know what we're trying to do, I'm sure of it, I'm sure of it. Right, let's try and do this. Speed swap into Palkia. Hydro pump into Zashin, which should take it down. Depending on how it's been trained, of course. But you've got to be a thick Zashin to take a Hydro Pump, a Life Orb Hydro Pump in the rain. Just hoping that we can take an Astral Barrage from the Calyrex. It's minus one, we've got plus one. So you would hope that we'll be able to take at least one Astral Barrage. That's not good. So Speed Swap does not work instantly then. Ooh, Trick Room. That kind of works for us. <laughs> that works as well. Uh, all right. Um, that definitely works for us. I thought it was dynamic speed turns. So you speed swap and you get the speed boost instantly. What speed is this, Feramosa? Well, it's definitely faster than everything on the field, you know? Not now, of course. But I mean, we can just throw a chop and Glacial Lance. And then we can just get rid of the Zash in after that. We've got Incineroar in the back. So, we've got the Babiri Berry. We'll be able to take the Zash in's attack. And I guess the speed swap on the Feramosa makes it super, super slow. So, we can just do that. And then our opponents being their own downfall there. They knew the speed swap was coming though, to be fair. So, fair play to them. Get the beast boost. Where you going? Behemoth into... Yeah, Kali. But they set the trick room up for us. So they did have the... I wonder if they did have him prison though. That's the thing. You know, we kind of suspected it. But now it's kind of... It's 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 game over right? really now. That kind of seals it from my opponent. Kind of want to... Uh, Oh, they good close combat. Nice. Uh, high horsepower. Should be enough, but I mean, we don't really need to worry about anything else. We can just go for the, the more accurate moves, and we do pick up a win to end this off. So that is nice, but um, yeah, a bit of a weird one there. I Like I said at the start of that one, okay, you got to just bear in mind that I probably wouldn't have brought the Feromosa there, although it did kind of clutch out. We kind of forced it a bit, that one, but it was fun to see. Feromos are doing some work there. Speed Swap, obviously, um, I obviously haven't used it enough to uh, understand it, but it is a very, very uh, nice tech to use. Um, so what we'll do, friends, as always, we'll finish up with the rental. Here's the team, friends. Like I say, if you want to try it out, definitely give Bevan a big shout out in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts on this team and the speed swap and things like that. And if you have a, any any joy with it, let me know how you get on with it. I really like the, the Kali. It has got a lot of options there with Swords Dance as well. Swords Dance, Trick Room are its last two moves there, the Bibiru Berry. But the heavy Trick Room in the team, I think, allows it a lot of kind of flexibility to work. Palkia is still such a good big threat in the format. And with recent results with Kyle, 
Berg are kind of popping up and doing so well. You'd imagine that Palki is going to be something that kind of players are maybe looking a little bit more at now. We already saw Alex Underhill do super well in Indy with um, a Palki Kali team he finished top four so the the archetype is very strong still and it's still relevant in the format even though it did have that really high spike um at the kind of start of series 12 and then kind of fell off mainly palkia but it is starting to slowly pick back up which is nice to see so let's wrap this one up friends thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode i hope you've enjoyed it it has nice been back finally after such a long time and uh, doing some vg content as well so we'll be trying to get more of this content out in the future if you'd like to see certain teams featured i got a bunch of teams that i do want to feature on the channel but if there's specific calls or teams that you want to see featured on the channel do let me know down in the comment section below or if you have a rental of your own that you think spicy enough for the channel link it down below or get in touch with me uh, via discord or twitter and uh, let me know the, the rental and we'll try and feature it as soon as we can but um we'll wrap it up there friends thank you so much again for tuning in all the support on the channel is always much appreciated and i'll see you all for another video very soon so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye